Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Community Voices. Hope everybody is doing well and doing good and feeling good. Today, we are born, joined by an elite, super talented, super athletic wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals. He's amazing. He's just, he's special. He's very special. Um, Andre Yossi Bosch, welcome to Community Voices, man. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you for having me. A great introduction. Appreciate it. Of course, man. I appreciate you join, joining. I'm saying taking time. You're in this off-season time to join us. So I really appreciate you. Yep. So um, also for those who may not know, this month is also a PI month. Um, so we're going to make sure we continue to lift up, lift up um, voices and continue to amplify voices and, you know, focus on having a community impact, especially during this month as we do every month. Um, so I actually want to um, kind of go into your history a little bit because I think you have a pretty interesting um, uh, story uh, you were mm -hmm. born in Japan, but raised in Hawaii. Am I correct? Yep. Okay. So, but like with that, you know, that's such a big cultural difference, like on both sides as a kid. I mean, there's just so much that you could be influenced by. Um, mm -hmm. What got you into football? And when did you kind of have that feeling that, you know, this was something that you could really do professionally as you got older? Mm. Well, it's, it's interesting because like, you know, there's actually a lot of Japanese people in Hawaii. Um, you mm -hmm. know, like it's, probably like the closest landmass to Hawaii besides California. Um, so like, I would say there's like, maybe it's like 65% of the island is, is Japanese to be honest. So like a lot of Japanese cuisine and culture has been in, like is influenced Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I started playing football pretty much right when I moved to Hawaii. Um, we moved out of Japan when I was like three. So, um, and I think I started playing flag football when I was like five or something. Um, you know, my parents just wanted me to do something, uh, just get out of the house, be active, find a community somewhat. Um, you know, they were new to, uh, they were new to the U S as well. So, you know, it, it was good for them to meet people, um, as well as it was good for me to just get around and have a community. And so, you know, that year I realized that I was like really fast and, um, just running around kids. And that's pretty much what I did my whole career up until I got drafted um but you know yeah so I was playing a lot but in high school I wasn't like very highly recruited I had two offers um just Princeton and Dartmouth my dad was really hard on me academically um uh and so you know the dream goal was always for me to go to Stanford you know I mean in my mind I was like oh they're in the Pac-12 and they have great academics so it's like the best of both worlds but you know I didn't I didn't have a great high school career, so Stanford wasn't an option for me. Um, and, you know, Princeton, I mean, Princeton and Dartmouth, obviously great schools, um, Ivy League, um, but, you know, just at the FCS level. Um, so, you know, I mean, I my path was my path. I mean, and if I didn't go to the NFL, uh, Ivy League education is what I would fall back on. So I thought that was a pretty good fallback plan. Um, but, you know, my freshman year of, of college at Princeton. I didn't play a single snap, but I had an end of season meeting with my coach, my head coach. And he said that I was one of the greatest. He, think I, he thought I had one of the best shots of making the NFL than anybody he's ever seen. Um, uh, so I was like, okay, I mean, okay, I guess. I mean, I didn't play a single snap. I don't really know what's going on with that. But you know, that sparked a little bit of something in me. And then COVID, I took the year off and I just literally benched and squatted every single day. I got massive and strong and fast and really like worked football for the first time in my life um, for a whole off season. Um, granted it was by myself and with my friends and like just going off YouTube videos, but still it was like a lot of time dedicated to football. And then once I came back for my junior year, um, I was a monster and I kind of realized that I, I think I could have gone to the league. I want to ask in that, that's actually a really like crazy story. Like I said it was, I knew, and you know, it's really like inspiring to, one thing you pointed out was that like your coach pointed out that you have the most potential to like take it to that next level, though you did not like did not play a snap. And like what what was what maybe what was it like then and how does it feel now to kind of like realize that there was like a seed planted there that like you weren't ready to realize, but it actually did grow. But then like taking in the fact that like yeah, like what are you seeing that I'm not? Because apparently I didn't like go. So like, what what was that experience like? Mm -hmm. Trying to believe in what he was saying and like like yeah, he's right. I can be that. He sees it in me. But then also being like, 
but it's not translating with like my time. Well, I'm kind of a guy that like keeps my head down and I just grind. So re whether, regardless of if he said that or not, like I would have done the same things probably to try to be the best football player I could have been. Um. Uh. So, I mean, obviously it was like nice to hear, but I think that regardless of if he said if he said that or not, I would have pretty much done the same things to try to just be a beast. So, yeah, I think yeah, it was nice to hear. Definitely though. I love it. I love it. I was just like, when you said that, I was like, man, that's crazy when you think about what happened compared to like what's happening in the future. Like, that's just so yeah. wild because he, he didn't even have to say that. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't. You know? Yeah, he really did. Yeah. But who knows? Who knows what that would have, you know, could have done for you mentally. Maybe that was what you needed to right. just go. So that's, that's super awesome. That's fire. Mm -hmm. um, also, I want to circle back a little bit to uh, when you were in Hawaii as well. Um, there are some huge names, some historic names, some legends who have come from Hawaii. Um, I can continue to name them. I can name them all. Uh, I can't name them all, but I know a good yeah. handful. There's a long list, though. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you, knowing that history and that rich history that's there, do you ever kind of like find like an extra sense of pride uh, taking that with you? Or does it kind of present like an extra like struggle? Like you feel like you have to like kind of carry on that legacy of the alumni before you. Does that kind of make you feel anything? Or it's just like, I'm going to go out there and be the best me and make my own history. What, what is that like to you? Yeah, it's kind of like more I just think about putting on for the for the islands. Um, it's not so much of a struggle or like I feel like I'm carrying a load. Um, it's more just, you know, I, I'm hoping that kids can look at everyone who's come or everyone who's in the league and, and, and is successful and know that they can do it, too. And it's more of just like hoping that I can uplift people who are looking up to me and looking up to a lot of the guys that uh, I looked up to as well growing up. So. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's a nice spot to be in. And, you know, I put enough pressure on myself to succeed. So that part is, that part is natural. Yeah. I love that. I love that. It's just more of like an extra, uh, extra, umph, extra, you know, motivation that or you already have right. a full tank. So I love that. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of uplifting people, community voices, we're always making sure we continue to do the work, uplift the community, support the community and give back. And this, and today is no exception. Today we'll be giving 10 K to the United way of greater Cincinnati make sure we continue their impact and their mission to just have an impact for the, for the kids and the youth in Cincinnati, giving them resources, giving them outlets, and just really making that change that we always um, use this platform to push and to do all around. So um, with that being said, how did you kind of get connected with this organization and um, what do they stand for that kind of like drew you to them? I mean, I wanted to uh, donate to a, to a charity that was within my community Obviously, I'm going to go back to Hawaii and do some stuff on my own. But I think that, you know, starting locally in the place that I hopefully will be for a good amount of time uh, and an organization organization that's so prominent um, and that's well established and trustworthy, I thought was the, you know, the safest and the best way to go. Definitely. If we're donating that much money. I love it. I love it. And because, you know, I think it's really important that even though your 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 history and your roots are elsewhere, that doesn't mean that you have to pick, you know, pick either or. It's about the amount that you give back wherever you touch, wherever your feet are planted, and how am I growing the soil around me? So right. I love that, that that is the approach that, you know, hey, I'm going to go back and give back and do my thing there. But I'm also here and I have to, you know, I also have to continue to respect the place that I'm at and like give back to the community. And right. I, was, I love that. Um, Are there any like summer events or anything that or is kind of like coming up that people maybe should be aware of out in Cincy? Uh, summer events. Uh, there's like a, a softball game. Uh, Logan Wilson. Um, he's hosting a softball game that people love to go to. I'm most likely going to attend that. Um, there's something happening on July 20th, I think, as well. Um, I forget what it, it, it's. If you're a Cincy fan, it's hosted by Bengals Gym. Bengal Gym, one of the best, uh, one of the most known fans of the Bengal fan base. Um, so he's hosting a huge event as well. And those are two that I will most likely um, be at. So, um, and the, uh, I'm not sure about any camps for now, but those are those are huge Bengal community events that people love going to. All right, that's super dope. Like I said, there's other ways to continue to extend your your presence in the community and giving back, even if it is just appearing. Because those appearances, seeing somebody that you only see on TV or seeing somebody that you may only see once in your life, can change people's lives. So I, lo I love that you continue to make that community right. uh, appearance in that aspect too. Um, I would love to know, you know, I know we talked about 
um, this being AAPI month, um, yep. what does that mean to you? And I mean, I know that sounds like a very traditional, um, kind of like almost like copy paste question, but I mean it so more so in the sense of like, when you think about that rich history that you do have, your, 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 like the ancestry you have and that you carry everywhere you go to mm -hmm. like going on to the field, to the endeavors that you do past the NFL, uh, how does that kind of live or manifest inside you and like reflect in your approach to life and the things that you do? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I was, I was raised on Asian values. Um, you know, my dad is European. My mom is Filipino. Uh, my dad's Romanian. Um, but, you know, in Hawaii, it's a lot of Asian values, a lot of, you know, respect your elders, be humble, um, let your work talk for itself. And I feel like that's like the way that I approach life and kind of like the way that I play football as well. Like I love that. I love that. Um, on top of that question, for me, I know there are some people in the Black community that I looked up to that to this day, I'm still driven and inspired by their work um, because representation means a lot. Um, who are, do you have anybody like that for you that like when you saw them uh, doing a certain thing or occupying a certain space or just when you met them that they inspired you within that community? Yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, you know, every Filipino household would would uh, look up to Manny Pacquiao. Um, like, no, um, don't I mean, that Floyd fight, um, you know, we can talk about that later. But <laughs> but, you know, he's he's the type of guy like he's a monster in the ring. You know what I mean? Like just killing dudes, um, but so humble in his press conferences, so humble after after a win and even after a defeat. Um, and so he's kind of a guy that represents what being Filipino and like being Asian is kind of all about. I love that. That's super, that's super awesome. Have you ever met him? No, my mom met him actually at a restaurant like five minutes from my house one time. I wasn't home, unfortunately. Dang. And yeah, I, I'm, obviously she like took pictures of him and stuff. I'm like, all right, like, that's <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love you happy for, but I love you like kind of jealous. Like, all right, well, like, yeah, I'm exactly. My house. Dang, like, right. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. That's funny. A um, couple more things before I get ready to kind of wrap things up with you. And I really appreciate your time again today as well. Um, one more of the two I had is that, you know, we continue to talk about um, AAPI month, but the percentage in the NFL is, is not, of course, not as big. You know, it's like, I think it's like uh, Asian and wives, um, they make up about like almost two or three percent of the players in the NFL. I think just like 27 players total in the league. It's a pretty small amount. Right. And I said to say, what is it, I mean, what does it mean to, 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 to be that? Maybe it kind of bounces off the last question, but like, is that again, help kind of give you an extra boop, uh, boop, an extra like mm -hmm. <laughs> boost on the field yeah. when you're playing and like just carrying that pride with you, you know, when you're, you know, on the field. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, uh, there's just one safety. His name's Cam Bynum. He plays on the on the Viking, Vikings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we immediately hit it off. Um, we knew each other beforehand, said what's up after the game. It's like little things like that. We recognize each other. We recognize how few of us have made it. Um, and we know that we're an inspiration to, you know, kids playing all over the U.S. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we just we love putting on for the culture. And, um, you know, it's you know, it's, it's all about work and just, you know, trusting the process. And I mean, that goes for, you know, obviously there's not, there's 27, you said 27, right? Like Asian Americans in NFL, the NFL right now, which is insane. Mm -hmm. And it's such a small community and it's kind of like a little family. Um, and I'm hoping to meet a lot of them uh, at some point. Um, I know another Hawaii guy, Nick Herbig, he's Japanese and his brothers, um, Nate, they both play for the Steelers. Don't like, don't like the team very much, but they're cool guys. Um, but, you know, it's like a little family and it's cool to see other guys like succeeding, succeeding and just being, you know, a good influence for hopefully the next generation of Asian athletes coming up. I love that. I love that. I want to ask one more thing before we get ready to wrap this up. Going into, you know, I know the NFL seasons, it's not like it's a while away, maybe three or four months away, but that time flies. Yep. What is the mindset and the new focus going into this next season to not just improve yourself and to be the best wide receiver that you can be for this year and take it to another level, but also just to have an impact on this team. Yeah. I mean, it's just, 
I mean, go as a football player, I like like you said, I want to be the best football player that I can be. Um, I want to maximize my potential um, and work as hard as I can to maximize that potential. And but to maximize your role on the team, you have to do whatever is asked of you, um, despite, you know, uh, despite maybe you not wanting to or you're not, you know, you're tired or whatever. You kind of just have to, you know, just keep going and look at the bigger picture and play for the team. I feel like a lot of people nowadays are like they're pretty into themselves, but uh, it's all about the team. And, well, you know, it's winning championships is what you play football for. Uh, you know what I mean? So that's that's always the bigger picture. I love that. I love that. And it seems like you got a good head on your shoulders. Are you ready and locked in to be great? So I love that. I love yeah, that. Man. Appreciate that. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. I appreciate you. Once again, also rooting for you this season. Going to be making sure I keep a special eye out on Cincinnati and seeing what appreciate you're doing out here. So much love from my side. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Community Voices. Until then, take care.